Hi, it's Tyler Matthews, Executive Director of Venture Cafe St. Louis. This is another episode of People Behind the Innovation. Today we have with us Sarah Chung and Sharita Love. Thank you guys for coming out and joining us today. Please go ahead and introduce yourselves. Sure. Hi, I'm Sarah Chung. I'm the Executive Director of Skip NV, and I'm also a faculty affiliate with the Social System Design Lab in the Brown School of Social Work at Washington University. And I'm Sharita Love. I'm the manager of the Education Hub at Innovation Hall in partnership with Skip and V. I uh, do a lot of work around education, equity, and entrepreneurship in the community as well. Cool. So this is a little interesting compared to what we've normally done in the past just because this is a project that's being spun out, incubated, mm-hmm. whatever you want to call it, out of Venture Cafe and in partnership with Skip and V. And so a lot of times these questions are directed towards companies asking them how they foster innovation. So what I'm going to actually ask is, Sarah, if you don't mind just getting us a little bit of background on Skip and V and how you're contributing to the innovation community in St. Louis. Sure. Well, Skip and V is relatively new to the space. We are about a year old, a little over a year old, so we're kind of babies in the space. And actually, I'm coming from WashU, where, you know, it's all about research, and it was all about, you know, rigor, and RCTs are the gold standard, and that's really great and wonderful. But where we were finding kind of disconnects between academic research and practice is where we want to sit in that space. So how do we make sure that what is rigorous, what is evidence-based, what is good, is actually getting to, into the hands of practitioners, and that that's not the only direction that it's moving, but that practitioners are also informing what's happening in the research world. And we feel like that's kind of where the crux of innovation begins, is when people start sharing about their research, sharing about their work, sharing about what's happening on the ground. And so Skip and V was really just an opportunity for us to start marrying two fields that are often talked about as being divided by a bridge, but hopefully trying to say, like, let's put them on top of each other so that research is practice and practice is research. So a lot of the work that we've been doing is in the field of educational equity. We really noticed that as being a place where uh, a lot of disparities exist, and that's where they begin is at that very, very early stage from any time, even in the the mother's womb and what she's doing while she's incubating a baby (laughs) to what happens in terms of where they go to preschool and where they end up going to kindergarten and all the way down the pipeline to adult education. And just the strategy think tank or the strategy tank uh, label. Are you guys rolling with that or... (laughs) I don't know that that's a thing, but we kind of made it up for ourselves because Think Tank didn't feel right. Think Tank felt, yeah, lots of thinking, but not enough doing, or, you know, just thinking is not enough. You need a good strategy. And so, you know, what we were noticing is that there are some really awesome things that have been happening in the community for a long period of time. A lot of nonprofits doing great work, a lot of academics doing great work too, but a strategy that didn't exist in terms of understanding the systems that are at play. So I'm a system dynamicist. I have fun making computer models and simulating them through my software. And, you know, we were doing this in different organizations all across the world in my role at WashU. You're going to the UK, getting asked to come to Connecticut and help their state improve things. And, you know, what was going on in their own backyard, we never had the opportunity to really apply this type of strategy there. And so What the system strategy would say is that, you know, everything's connected and sometimes doing everything is not what you need to do to make a system better. There's timing and there's a sequence. So if you do things at one part of the system in one particular time, over time, ideally, if the systems are all connected, then it'll affect things later. So in terms of education and the context that we think about here, you know, we were noticing a lot of cool things happening that really need to be there in terms of helping kids and their welfare, you know, backpacks for kids, food pantries for kids, but how long have we been funding these types of initiatives? How do we get to a place where we get to fund even better things because kids have all that stuff. Their families are, you know, working on some of these things already. How do we get cool things in the classroom? Like some of the innovations that are happening where we see, you know, artificial reality or augmented reality where you can look at a table and see a whale and experience how the whale moves in the water. Like those are the types of things that would be really cool to start funding, but we're still focused and have been focused on the very, very basic needs. And that doesn't feel right to us. So I want to try and give some background here on how EdHub started. Yeah. So Sharita, actually, I'm going to toss this to you. It's funny because we worked on this together yeah. <laughs> with Sarah. But <laughs> as, you know, as the person that's boots on the ground and building this thing from the ground up, can you give us some background on 
how this came to be and then also what we are planning this to become. Sure. And I'm actually, because I think it's important to lay the groundwork on how Skip and V identified Venture Cafe as an organization that could help support, move along, facilitate something like this initiative. I think I'll first ask Sarah to (laughs) kind of talk about how you identified us, and then I can take it from there. That's a great question. (laughs) I've been stalking Venture Cafe for quite some time, (laughs) kind of perusing your websites and wanting to be part of the community. I think I first came into contact with your website maybe three years ago. And, you know, from an academics world, it was mind blowing that people would come together and just share ideas openly (laughs) without claiming it as their own or having to cite themselves, you know, and that was very exciting to me that it existed, but it felt like it was just for the business community and that it wasn't for me necessarily as someone who's a social entrepreneur. And so, you know, I've always wanted to come to your Thursday gatherings. I literally thought it was a cafe where you served food. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but learned a lot more. And, you know, having attended and seeing how you bring together this spirit of not competition but collaboration seemed to be a really, really important key to what needs to happen in terms of the education equity pipeline here in St. Louis. There's a lot of cool ideas happening. We have classrooms that have been set up to become trauma-informed, literally bean bags in the floor and, you know, places where kids can actually identify the needs that they have socially, emotionally in one particular classroom, but a lot of that work is not being shared. So how do we create a sense of community, places where people will enjoy hanging out together rather than feeling like they need to compete? And Venture Cafe was an ideal situation Mm -hmm. to do that. So it's kind of a risk. I don't think you've ever done this before with educators, and it's a different kind of Mm -hmm. pool. But then Sharita happened to be with Venture Cafe at the time, and Mm -hmm. we were already listening to her at Equity (laughs) Podcast kind of on the side. And so it was like meeting a celebrity, and all the pieces just aligned. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that. And, you know, Tyler and I would share these moments where we're like, how did this happen? How did this come together? But it's certainly something that we know is meant to be something that's needed for our region. And so I would say something that Sarah's also mentioned was the connectivity that is involved in systems and in the work that she does, as well as the work that Skip NV supports. And so I would say... We know in St. Louis specifically, because I can speak to this region, being an educator and being involved in education and the equity landscape here, our schools, our education systems that are outside of formal learning time are very disconnected. And so looking at ways that we could leverage the brilliance that Venture Cafe has kind of harvested around bringing large numbers of folks together over a sustained period of time to make some cool things happen in innovative ways is something that is exciting to hopefully bring to the education space as well. There are a lot of cool things happening, but they're happening in siloed, separate spaces. And so the opportunity for us to come together, collide with one another, create some community around these ideas in the education space is what we hope to support with the Education Hub. And so, Sharita, also, if you can give just a little bit of your background too, because yeah. it is really cool how this <laughs> came together. Because hiring someone with an education background is typically not right. what we're looking for right. from the, oh, when you were helping kind of like create the experience around events. Mm-hmm. But we also had that education history. And mm-hmm. so we're like, oh, well, this is cool. I mean, we are doing yeah. education throughout the year. If you look at the sessions as free education for the community, for the business community, mm-hmm. but not necessarily in the sense where your background is in. Right. I'm curious too, can you also explain the podcast you're working on? Because it's really funny that Sarah was listening to your podcast <laughs> yeah. beforehand. Yeah. So just a brief background yeah. on what you were doing. Okay, and sure. Still doing today. Sure. So I'm an educator. I taught at a local district here in St. Louis for a bit and found my jam really in the outside of school space. So after leaving the classroom, I worked for a local nonprofit and really saw my usefulness there. I saw that, oh, you know, I can make a much larger impact than I could in the classroom, where I did feel, honestly, very limited in the work that I can do. Love the light bulb moment that came about when kids got it, like that was my thing, you know. Loved teaching, loved education, knew that that was my space, but again, knew that the classroom was just probably not 
the best space for me. And so anyway, so moving into the what we would call informal education space, working in underserved communities, working with students who were two or more grade levels behind, working with those adults who were learning to read, working with teenagers who were not on the path to college to kind of get them engaged and enrolled in college. All those experiences kind of help support the work that I would eventually do. I've always been an entrepreneur since I was a kid, as long as I can remember, but never really identified as an entrepreneur until probably about five years ago. I ran candy stores. I had my own pet grooming business, like, you know, before I got into the classroom, which is really weird, but, you know, it was cool. I have started organizations, co-founded organizations, and, you know, all around education, all around looking at ways to increase equity for folks of color. So Glam, Girls Lady Make Moves, is an organization I co-founded, which has had quite a bit of success this year. We're going into six schools. Expanded Equity Collaborative, I founded after Mike Brown was killed in 2014 and worked with a number of organizations on curriculum development, looking at, you know, their communication, the way they build their boards, the way they market themselves in ways that are equitable. So that's something that I've done and really got into podcasting. You know, I'm just kind of going through the list here. Really got into podcasting maybe about two years ago. I was working in a co-working space, a local space here in St. Louis, Tech Artista. They had a studio. I'm like, I think I can do that. Did it one time and fell in love with it. And I've interviewed folks here in St. Louis, folks across the country. Folks will find me on Twitter. And it's just something I never knew I would love. But I continue to podcast for myself and then for a local organization, Educators for Social Justice. So I have done some extensive work in the STEM field, working with Washington University's STEM Pact Initiative, continue that work, working with educators to look at integrating STEM in their classrooms with a specific lens for girls and students of color. So, so with EdHub, the, I guess the yeah. newest project of that long string of... Yeah, no. There. <laughs> with EdHub... So I'm not going to like bore people listening with like going through like every single thing that we're doing there. I think they can go on the website. So there's that. That's true. (laughs) Let me retract that. Retract it. Let me let me save the excitement of the programming (laughs) that's available through EdHub for the website and Mm -hmm. also for the launch on um, August 30th. Mm -hmm here at the 4240 building. Yep. So definitely come and learn more about that. We'll have the keynote. We'll have several speakers. We'll have several activities that are happening. And also this is pretty pretty much like a glimpse of yeah. bringing everyone together in the education space and not just for teachers, mm-hmm. but for everyone that's operating that space mm-hmm. that wants to see kids get the access to education and the support that they need to, to make the best use of their education. Well, we can get more into that in a minute. What I want to ask you is, like, what are the things that you're looking forward to most through EdHub? And both of you, Sarah and Trita, can speak to that. Yeah. I'll start. I think I'm looking forward to what has already started to happen, which is, you know, exciting. There is a lot of, again, excitement engagement with what's happening here around education. I think educators are ready for a change, something different. Um, what do you mean here? Like In Cortex, I would say, in particular. People, you know, across St. Louis, folks are excited about, you know, all the things that happen here, want to see, you know, want to experience. But then when you add the lens that we're going to talk about, you know, the education space and open ourselves up to educators broadly, folks are really excited about that. They want to bring their ideas. And when I meet with folks, that's what I say. You know, I talk about us being a platform, but you bring your brilliance. As an educator, you bring what you have to share with the community at large. And the goal, again, is to make some cool things happen so that kids benefit the most. So that's what I'm most excited about, how folks are coming in already, wanting to engage, wanting to just try out, you know, thoughts that they have around different ideas that can be implemented in the ed space, but then also those things that can benefit the community at large. So how can I come in and showcase what I'm doing so that I can engage with folks in different school districts or I can provide some STEM activities or STEM access? So that's been the most exciting part for me, and I want to see as an educator, of course, kids in this space. Like, I'm excited about that. Like, kids being here, kids being able to experience and know what's possible and being able to touch and feel and know what's tangible for them. I'm excited about that as well. Yeah, for me, I mean, a lot of this comes from just even the recommendation before even Mm -hmm. finding out about 
the possibility that Ed Hub could mm-hmm. exist in the cortex through the Ford through Ferguson mm-hmm. recommendations on creating some innovative space where people could share best practices, ideas, and learn from those things to enrich their educational environments wherever they take them back to. For me, I think what's most exciting besides you know, the, the cool space and like the, the nice design and all of that. It is the outcomes of what it could be to be a student in St. Louis one day. If we have, you know, a bunch of educators who are passionate, who can come and share their ideas and augment their ideas because they've been sharing with others who have tried maybe some similar thing Mm -hmm. in their own classroom and then refine those things. I imagine that the sky's the limit in the terms of schools, the types of schools that we could create, the types of classroom environments that we could create, even like the profession of being a teacher. I think having a place and space for us to come together and call our own is such Mm a wonderful career kind of community that you know, it probably exists within individual schools, but across the region, it would be really, really wonderful. Because, I mean, we all know that in terms of the data, the the number of kids that migrate from district to district are not just, it's not a a trivial number. There's a high migration rate for kids across the the region. So if we were starting to share, you know, our practices with that, that would be really amazing. I mean, I have all sorts of ideas I could share that, you know, eventually it would be wonderful to see. But honestly, I would love St. Louis to stop being the place where people identify as like you don't want to send your kid to school in those regions or you don't want to send them to public school there but that St. Louis could be a place where people from the outside would actually come here to learn how are we doing things differently how are we serving those that are most in need and actually changing their futures because we're able to bring people together that'd be cool Mm -hmm. And I'll just add, too, that, you know, the possibility of redefining the education space is exciting because we know that, you know, 20 percent of learning is within the classroom, the four walls and what we traditionally see as education, but expanding what we view as education, you know, that it's not just what happens when you sit down in a classroom. For teachers, I'm talking about for a science center, museums, those education entrepreneurs that are out there, like redefining that space so that folks know, you know, in the end, we're keeping kids at the center and we're going to have to go across all of those lines to make this happen in a collaborative way. I think also just to add, cool, <laughs> we'll now, we're talking, now we're talking, now we're talking. By the way, um, one other cool thing that I think I've already started witnessing, which is really, really exciting, is, I mean, people getting jobs. We held this systems thinking for educational equity partnership here in this space, uh, what, three weeks ago or something, and there's a person who was just looking for a role and wanted to find a good fit and participate in this three-day workshop, and then at the end, he had already been interviewed pretty much basically had signed the paperwork and yeah. got a job working yeah. in a school district. It was really, really cool. Yeah. So the same things that happen in the business community in terms of Absolutely. networking and partnership and meeting new people and getting new ideas. I mean, that yeah. is everything here. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. It's like this framework for connecting people in a way that wasn't forced, that wasn't a traditional networking environment where you felt like you had to put on this facade right? where people felt like they could share their crazy ideas and not be mm-hmm. judged for it. Mm-hmm. We're finding now it's, we did on this like large scale with a very general audience. And now we're kind of like breaking it down into the long tail where it's like, okay, well that worked well for this very broad entrepreneurial community. What does that do to the educator community and not just teachers, but specifically that that education community really touches a lot of different yeah, interests sure. as well, mm-hmm. which is also part of the success of why venture cafe works is because it's not just one particular industry. Yeah. And so that's, I think, for me, is what's really exciting is to see this other niche community, but that's also has all these different touch points. Mm-hmm. So it's almost kind of like focused, but at the same time able to bring in, you know, the entrepreneurial community, mm-hmm. everyone else into it. And so it'll be really cool as this experiment, as this next phase for Venture Cafe to see how that works in a different mm-hmm. capacity. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited to be part of the ride. And I wanted to also ask, Shreda, if you could encapsulate in a very short description exactly what EdHub is. Yeah. Short description of EdHub is that it's a space. It's a platform for educators across sectors to come together, to experiment, to collaborate, and to make some cool things happen. Again, so that kids benefit most. We provide the platform, again, of space where you can come, you know, host your event, host your conference, your professional development. We provide that space for you to do that. It's donated space. We provide access so that if 
families and kids need to get here. We'll provide transportation so that can happen. We have a fellowship, which is very exciting, working with education entrepreneurs broadly, so folks who are working either within schools, within organizations on some educational initiatives. We provide some support, development, mentorship to deepen their work within the St. Louis community and the education landscape. And then in the summer of 2019, we are going to work with the kiddos and provide some opportunities working with different organizations uh, to provide some summer experiences for students. So... That's the short answer. <laughs> it's really short. And then also a preview of yeah. what to expect at the launch on mm-hmm. August 30th. Yeah, so the launch on August 30th, again, here from 5 to 8, 4240 Duncan. We will have guest speakers. Our keynote is Jose Vilson, who has an organization called Educolor. He's going to talk to us about, you know, just innovating the education space and what the future of education looks like. We have uh, Nisha McRae, who is out of Boston, works at MIT, does some cool work in STEM. And then Angela Dye, who works for PBS. Those are kind of our highlighted speakers that are coming. But then we also are, you know, inviting in superintendents, school leaders to have some conversations around what the Ed Hub needs to be for our educational community and getting honest feedback and thoughts from them. Families, students, educate, like everybody's invited. Everybody will be here. We have some cool activations from the Magic House, Makerspace. Like there's a lot that'll happen around experiences, sharing your thoughts as a community really about the future of education as it relates to what the Ed Hub can be. So I'm just excited about all the engagement that'll happen on next week. So Sarah, can you explain who Ed Hub STL is for? Sure. I think there's two different veins you could go. Based on what I just talked about, you know, there's a traditional education community that we would love to participate, especially those who often are left out of conversations about what's happening in education, teachers from districts that don't have a lot of resources or are resource constrained, I should say. We would love that. Educators, parents, children. I love that you mentioned that, Sharita. And on the EdHub invite, it even says, bring your kids. And I fully intend to do that. And I hope you bring yours too. (laughs) But I think there's this other community that, you know, is not clearly defined as being in the education community, but are clearly doing education work. You know, people who are creating all of this fun stuff in St. Louis, like the zoo, the Mm -hmm. people are interested in, you know, helping out with like computer science, launch code folks, like Mm -hmm. those who are actually in the industry and have things to provide to the next generation. I love that they could also feel a part of this as well, because truly it will take a community for us to educate the rest of the community Mm -hmm. on what's next for St. Louis. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything to add? Just again, thinking broadly about what education is and who's an educator and who's in the space and it's for them. At some point, we want to incorporate kids and incorporate student learning, student voice, and, you know, access for students. But I would add that this space is for educators. There's a lot of learning and unlearning that we have to do in the education space. And so it's important to support educators so that, again, we're supporting our students as best as we can. So I want to thank you both again for joining us today on the People Behind the Innovation podcast. So before we wrap up, just want to, uh, Shrita, if you don't mind, just giving us a glimpse of what to expect before we sign off here. That'd be great. Absolutely. So we are looking for the community, specifically education community, to join us for the Education Hub, Ed Hub STL, launch on August 30th from 5 to 8. We will be at 4240 Duncan, first floor. And you can expect to get a glimpse into what the Education Hub will be for the St. Louis region, hear from some amazing speakers, and take away some resources. You know, if you're in schools, in classrooms, you can grab a hold of some resources for your work, hopefully connect with some other folks who are in the space as well, and continue the conversation about what the Education Hub will be for St. Louis. And did you mention free food? Oh, yeah. (laughs) That's important, too. Free food, drinks. It'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be a great night. It'll be fun. Well, thank you both. And you can find out more information on Venture Cafe's website at venturecafestl.org, and you'll be able to 
find a link there on the homepage that will direct you to the EdHub launch mm -hmm. and all the details that come with that, and directions, etc. included. And for more information on the EdHub STL program, you can go to innovationhallstl.org slash edhubstl. 